Jesus. <laughs> Could have been in the middle of the G Fest. <laughs> well, that's why I asked about starting her. It was eight pages, but it was in an outline form. Uh, I started thinking more. I'm like, it's probably better if that was its own thing, anyways. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I was just I was just looking at the, the, the time slot. I was like, holy shit. This is Gogo Kaiju Show, where we have a healthy obsession with Kaiju. I am your co-host, Kent, and with me is your other co-host. Jason, how's it going? And that was really long. <laughs> I was trying to make you sweat. <laughs> um, we are back after a few weeks, and we are here to discuss the obligatory post-G-Fest... 29 or G-Fest 2024. Episode. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, before we get on with our discussion of this year's G Fest, G Fest 29, uh, we want to um, first say that uh, I made an individual uh, segment podcast slash video um, that is going to be separate from this. I highly uh, encourage all of you to check that out if you haven't already done so. Um, It's something that has been weighing heavily on my mind for a while, and it's something I've seen fans similar to myself have gone through, and I think it's incredibly important that everyone sees it and just tries to make the fandom better, to say the least. So uh, please watch or listen to it. Uh, Second of all, um, for those who are not familiar with our G-Fest discussion episodes what we do is obviously we're going to discuss g fest and then we're going to be on hiatus again for a little while um not just to sort of recharge ourselves but also because of some um, vacations that are coming up as well so jason and i decided before we came on here we will be returning uh august 24th for the next podcast so it won't be up for what probably what a week like september uh, no, if it's, we're coming, so it would be available like August 31st, more than likely for all of you to watch and listen, depending upon the format. And um, we will be, instead of going back to Common Writer, we're still going to put that on hiatus for a little bit. What we're going to discuss in that first episode on the 24th is the Gamma Rebirth miniseries. And then the episode we do after that, a couple weeks from then, we are going to uh, start discussing the Ultraman anime, the three seasons involved with that. I think, uh, Jason and I didn't dive in too much about this, but I think we will have three podcast episodes devoted to that because there are three seasons of that show. And I think, e- if I remember correctly, each season had like 12 episodes. So I think that's appropriate uh, for each podcast episode, one episode for each season. And then once we have concluded the Ultraman anime series, we will discuss the Ultraman Rising movie that came out three so weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So that probably, and I'm just guessing without really looking at a calendar, and I'm too lazy right now to pull up a calendar. I think that's going to take us probably into early mid-November, if I had to guess. And so I think it's going to be a little bit sooner than that. It could be. Um, like I said, I don't have a calendar. So probably uh, probably no earlier than late October, but probably no later than mid-November. And then after that, then we're going to continue and hopefully conclude the original Common Writer series. And we intend on continuing to do the live commentary and discussion like we had prior to, what, two, three months ago when we decided to cover some other material. So, uh, Jason, before we also get into the GFS 29 discussion, is there anything else you need to add? No, not really. Just uh, make sure to uh, hit the subscribe button wherever you're watching us down below this video and smash the like button. (laughs) That's all I got to say. Man. Smash it! Uh, (laughs) All right. So, um... G Fest 29. This uh, was our first G Fest since 2022 when we went to G Fest um, 20, 
20, 27. Yeah, 27. <laughs> so I wrote him, oh, son of a bitch. In my um, <laughs> little video that I just did before doing this, I said it was G Fest 27 of the Godzilla, Godzilla's Revenge 50th anniversary. It's G Fest 26. So I guess maybe, Jason, you could put a graphic up. When I say G Fest 27, that video put actually G Fest 26. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> um, so yeah, I fucked that up. <laughs> I at least own my mistake. My what mistakes. else is new? <laughs> so, um, once again, uh, you know, I was kind of anticipating this. Uh, this was our 10th G Fest. Um, Hard to believe, actually. Yeah. I mean, uh, COVID Although, got in the way. So there were two years without G Fest. So, I would say we almost did it straight, but we didn't go to G Fest 28 last year. So that kind of yeah broke it up, uh, kind of ended our stream. Break. Yeah. Um, so how do we want to approach this? Like, I, I, I guess maybe uh, some, I guess I'll start off by saying, you know, definitely, of course, looking forward to it. My son Lincoln came with us again. That was something I was really excited about because this was his second G-Fest. Uh, he did enjoy the first one, even though he was not very good in sitting down with some panels. Um, I will say, however, off the bat, for me, this was a G Fest that was not one of my favorites. And it has nothing to do with the panels and stuff. Although I have some different issues involving some of the panels and other things uh, that went on with G Fest. But the reason why this wasn't one of my favorite was because Lincoln and I, we must have contracted some type of mild stomach bug. Um, like Thursday night, Friday morning, because, uh, he and I really, I mean, for me throughout the, from the moment the convention started all the way to even the day we went home on Monday, um, I was not feeling all that great. And Lincoln, he was not feeling great Friday, but by maybe middle of the day, Saturday, he started doing better. So, uh, he spent he he went to a couple panels more than he did a couple years ago, but he still spent quite a bit of time in the room. And then even I uh, spent a fair amount of time in the room. Part of that though had to do with the fact too that starting Saturday there weren't as many panels that I was interested in. But there was even a point uh, Saturday night when I was talking with you where I was even thinking I may not even be able to attend the costume parade. I know. And, and I know you mentioned this, uh, when the two of you arrived, I think it might've been on that day, uh, Monday, the eighth or, uh, one of the days, uh, leading up to the event that you were saying, Oh, I don't, I just hope that I don't get, uh, caught with anything and all that. Well, you jinxed yourself. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Um, I mean, look, being sick in general sucks, regardless of whatever it is you catch. One of the things I was concerned about was COVID because I'm an asthmatic and I, I've already had COVID once before. And it's just like, oh, dear God, like, please don't let me walk away with with COVID. I thankfully uh you know, we were some of the fortunate ones that didn't get COVID a couple of years ago. That was the first G-Fest coming out of COVID. And like, I don't want to say half, but at least a decent swath of the G-Fest attendees uh, caught COVID at that particular G-Fest. This G-Fest also set a lot of records. There have been uh, differing reports as to numbers. The one I keep seeing the most was 10,000 plus. One I saw twenty thousand, but it's like I don't think it was twenty thousand. I, I don't think it would be it twenty thousand. Just you know, if it was twenty thousand, you wouldn't even uh, get an inch of walking in. Well, and I've even because I kept thinking about it too with the ten thousand. I'm like, even ten thousand seems like it could be too much. Yeah, I do um, believe. Yes, this did set an attendance record, no question. I would say but I don't know if it even reached quite ten thousand. Yeah, it, out of all 
of the GFest that we've been to, yeah, it it seemed like there were way more people there uh, compared to any of the other years, especially with, uh, you know, Godzilla calling the new empire, and then you had Godzilla minus one coming out within a few few or so months uh, from each other there. That pretty much kind of helped boost the numbers to it, but we'll have to see whenever we get the official numbers. Uh, I would think that guys. the numbers would be out right now because it's been a week. Um, I haven't seen anything official. I, yeah, I let know me, earlier in the I checked. Let me the check. G-Fest. Yeah, let me check G fan here. I'm gonna check the GFS Facebook page. Because there, because I know that they'll usually have some of that stuff on the GFS uh, G fan page because they have a special page dedicated to GFS and past GFS. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing anything here at the moment. So probably going to take maybe another week or so uh, to kind of get things uh, start to come in and everything. But uh, yeah, as always, uh, G-Fest kind of came and flew (laughs) by the seat of our pants like it always does, you know, leading up to it. But I would say by uh, mid-Sunday, this past Sunday as of this recording anyways, uh, I just felt like I just wanted to start heading home <laughs> myself uh, in that regard, just, you know, just uh, encountering a lot of people. I think just encountering a lot of people, even though you, you, we didn't really mingle much with some, some of the people, except between you, me, and Lake, that it just kind of takes the winds out of your sails. Well, and, and here's the thing. I think uh, Lincoln, I think, is definitely an extrovert. I think you oh, and yeah. I are in, <laughs> you and I, I think, are introverts. And one of the things about introverts is that when you're in uh, settings where there's a lot of people and just a lot of uh, talking and what have you, it wears you out. And I mean, it definitely I, I'm not a fan of large crowds to begin with, because I in some situations i can get claustrophobic um that's the only time i get claustrophobia but it's just it's it's exhausting like it mentally kind of wears you out after Mm -hmm. um, a bit and then speaking of the crowds and everything with all the panels that we want to go again it seems like every time when we do the pre-shows and everything it's like oh i want to go to this panel oh I want to go to that panel, this panel, so on and so forth. And then when she, we get to the actual event, pretty much all our plans just goes out the window. <laughs> well, pretty much. But then this is, yeah. And then uh, before, um, before I finish, uh, there are at least a couple of panels that I know both of us definitely wanted to go to. But then you uh, told me, maybe be a text in person that uh, so many people at this panel is like almost every C is just taken and all that, or like some of them are starting to flow out the, uh, the entry or exit way of these panel rooms. Cause just a lot of people uh, there this time around compared to other G fest in the past. Yeah. Um, here's the thing. Like, um, I'm not going to blame um I'm not going to blame like the GFS committee for the numbers because who could have anticipated such a large crowd this year but I will sort of put the onus on them for this in that they should have known that there would have been at least some sort of uptick in attendance because I mean it's you and I have gone to enough GFS over the last 12 years that it, I mean, it's obvious every time there was like at least one new Godzilla movie, major Godzilla movie, there was a bigger attendance at uh, the following G fest. If the movie came out, like, you know, like, like um, 
like in 2014, when it came out in May, that year's G-Fest, you saw an uptick in people because of that film. And then with Shin Godzilla, even though that came out, was it October? Yeah, it was October, October of 2016. October 2016. In 2017, you had a bit of an uptick with that G-Fest. So, but here's the thing. I, I will say this. When it came to... There were uh, a few panels that I wanted to go to that I was not able to go to. Uh, let me try to find them here quickly. One of them uh, on that very first day was the 60th anniversary of Ghidorah, the three-headed monster. Another one was 50 years of uh, Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla. And then let me find the last one. The last one I think was on a Saturday. Um, let me see here. It was, I think, probably was it another? I know we I wanted to do oh, the was, Space Godzilla one. Yes, Space Godzilla. That was the other one. For some strange reason, um, those three panels were in I, I, I don't ballroom know. A. Ballroom A. I, I couldn't remember. I um, ballroom which A, is- which was the smaller ballroom out of the main ballroom area. Mm-hmm. I, to me, in my experience, <clears throat> even before this, in the previous nine G Fest I had gone to, the anniversary panels, unless it's some really obscure movie like Dogura this year, which was celebrating the 60th anniversary, was in ballroom A. That at best was maybe half filled. It was but something like that's like... You. Yeah, but something like a Godzilla movie or something involving a kaiju that's popular, like a Space Godzilla, even Mecha Godzilla, Ghidorah, those particular panels should have been moved to BC mm-hmm. because the Return of Godzilla 40th, the Mothra versus Godzilla 60th, the Godzilla minus one, um, you know, those were all in ballroom BC. And even the uh, Final Wars 20th anniversary panel was in Ballroom A. That came pretty close to oh. being full, but I think that was I think that was on a Sunday. So with it being on a Sunday, I think that helped prevent it from being overflow. But if that had been on a Saturday or a fr- or the Friday, that would have overflowed. Mm-hmm. And I think what they needed to do is look at something like this and it's like if it's a godzilla anniversary uh panel it needs to be moved into the bigger space yeah i think the only good thing out of some of these anniversary ones was that the uh the monsterverse 10th anniversary was in ballroom bc and that and that was decent i would say a good portion of the seats it was decently attended, but it wasn't full. I would say it would be more than half, at least. Oh, yeah. It was 75, 80, maybe. Somewhere Some, around something there, yeah. Like that. I would say yeah. 70, 75. But um, Jeff Horn, who uh, does the in-house channel uh, for G-Fest and the film room and is also part of the uh, G-Fest committee, um. I saw one of his posts. Someone had posted something to the effect of how full it was. And then he responded something to the effect of, yeah, we weren't expecting something like that. And we're going to work with the hotel in the future to try to solve this. Um, Like you and I discussed, not just two years ago, but even this year, unless it's costing a lot of money for G Fest to rent space, you and I had said that there are some decent size uh, rooms and ballrooms on that same level to where um, they could have used those spaces. Yeah, and I was just mentioning about that uh, now in person when we were there, but also in the pre-show or pre-show review of uh, GFS that uh, they could have utilized that Rosemont ballroom, but it seemed like they were there were some uh, other meetings being held during the time, especially towards uh, the end on Sunday. On Sunday, yes, but, but it uh, was empty Friday and Saturday. Yeah, and and then speaking of the the overcrowdness, 
the really good example was the Kaiju Island uh, mm-hmm. thing, the uh, the other half of the dealer's room, where it was located in one of the other uh, meetings. It was rooms. on the international level. Yeah, uh, very more or less the, the basement, the the lowest basement there, pretty much right in front of the escalators there and pretty much you have bob eggleton matt frank and some of the other um artists and maybe some other vendors there you had lines out of the wazoo leading i would at least say maybe close to the other end of one of the hallways uh going southward or southbound there and yeah and i and i told you (laughs) that they should have foreseen this especially when it comes to some of these well-known artists having them in that small amount of space they should have used or probably gotten uh this uh the rosemont maybe half of the rosemont uh ballroom to accommodate the whole line issue well and i didn't disagree with you because when i had seen uh, Matt Frank's post as far as where he and others were going to be. I was like, I bet that's kind of where the autograph thing was at least back in G fest 27. I don't know if it was that way last year, but I'm like, I bet that's probably where it is. And even I was like, until I see it, I have to verify it. And yeah, I'm like, Oh no, like this isn't good because yeah. Like you, I looked at that and I'm like, that's going to be crowded. Yeah. And, and and then, you know, you had other spaces uh, being filled up, such as the uh, the art display, Minia's place, and then maybe a couple others there where you had lines really going past that. You always have to squeeze in every time you, when you want to enter or exit some of those rooms. With that particular Kaiju Island space, it wasn't until middle of the day Sunday when there weren't lines anymore Mm -hmm. because that one always had a line because it was small and yeah, the dealer's room, the line got ridiculously long. Like the first day it went down past the ballrooms, down that main hall, down into kind of the lobby area. And then it hugged the wall, went underneath the main uh, lobby area, went back behind to where there's usually like the sitting area for people to have lunches went down and it even curled into where the swimming pool, the old swimming pool used to be. However, even though that was ridiculously long, the line moved. And part of that was, yeah, I mean, Kaiju world dealers room, the main dealers room is a significantly bigger space. And then you get to a point eventually where there's enough constant flowing of in and out. Mm -hmm. that you can keep the line maintaining usually after an hour or so on friday and potentially saturday there gets to be a point where you don't have to wait anywhere near as long in that line that's been one of the great things about this hyatt uh regency location is that with the dealer's room um you could yeah be at the tail end of the line but you're still not waiting that long unless you're crazy and you're there at like five in the morning or whatever Um, Mm -hmm. Usually, though, you're probably at the front of the line at that point. But you're flowing in pretty quickly. The Kaiju Island, there was always a damn line there. And I'm hoping they get that fixed because not just the Rosemont. To be perfectly honest, the Rosemont ballrooms, I think they need to use for panels. There, You could have had maybe half the vendors. Let's just say half, for sake of argument. Half of those Kaiju Island vendors in that space i don't know what the rooms were um and then move the others either into individual rooms either further down that hallway in the same hallway menia's places or on the level in which um the uh, uh, swimming pool room was or even the level above that where the autograph Mm -hmm. uh rooms were and those some of those rooms were bigger than the was it one or two rooms that they stuck kaiju island in mm-hmm. yeah you just kind of uh pretty much said what i was 
probably going to say as far as suggesting how to go about this. Uh, yeah, I would totally agree to have the two main panel rooms kind of where uh, the Rosemont ballroom is just kind of split in half and then you pretty much would have equal amount of space and then that's kind of where you can do uh, the, uh, the costume parade uh, right there too and just mainly have uh, the whole other ballroom where Kaiju World Dealer's Room is that just fully expand that to be the, the entire dealer's room. But I know that you have uh, Dojo Studios kind of stuck in the middle between those two where the current panel rooms are and the dealer's room. With the amount of space that uh, Dojo Studios has, I honestly think that they didn't really need that amount of space especially you know when you go in there it just seems like a whole lot of empty space i mean granted you're gonna need some space for people to lay their costumes and stuff but i've seen a couple other ones in the uh the lower level just right underneath where the old swimming pool was where they had uh uh, a cosplay meetup just use one of those rooms where you can store uh the costumes and everything but then also probably would have to uh reconfigure uh relocate uh the uh uh dojo studios uh right there then you're gonna have to sort of accommodate accommodate to where um and i know that dojo studios will need to have some room to accommodate for what they're doing there maybe have it uh in the lower area maybe across from uh the film room but then you're going to need to relocate uh the game room the game room and everything and game tournament tournaments uh <laughs> and all that so there's going to have to be a lot of accommodations uh, moving forward <laughs> in order. Yeah. To I mean, there's a lot that. of different ways you could handle this. And yes, if anyone from the G fest committee is listening, this is free advice. And I'm not saying you guys screwed up. All I'm saying is that I think anniversary panels, especially of Godzilla film should be moved to the larger ballroom. And I think it should have been a foreseen to some extent to see a bit of an uptick in traffic especially uh, that, when you have two movies coming in <laughs> one after right. the other. I mean, that's all i'm saying um but they're moving forward and granted here's the thing i don't think there's anything else major coming up between now and next july i don't think so yeah the only um, thing the only thing i can think of is the next Godzilla Kong movie, which isn't going to be a, around till was it 2027 or like, yeah. So, um, I doubt they'll see the same numbers next year. So I can understand perhaps the mindset being of maybe just kind of leaving some things alone. And I don't blame them for initially thinking that, but you know, like I was, you know, like we were talking about, like the Rosemont ballrooms could be used, excuse me, as another panel area. Or, although I'm not sure now that I think about it, if this would work considering how lines would work, maybe the Rosemont ballrooms could be a potential space for the dealer's room. My only concern about that, though, is how lines would form there, and you could end up having some real issues with congestion in a couple spots, and then, maybe. And then I, I would say is that the de- for that area, it seems to be, the Rosemont ballroom, it seems to be a little bit smaller compared to the current size of uh, Kaiju World or maybe the same. Really? I thought it was I or thought maybe, it was same size, if not bigger. I would say it would at least be close to the same size or possibly a bit smaller because with that whole grand ballroom area where they're at now, you can at least expand that to make it bigger. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah, just even, yeah, just use the Rosemont for ballrooms. Um, I'm just use the Rosemont ballroom <laughs> as panel rooms. Um, one of the things I thought was really interesting, though, that despite the enormous attendance this year, 
the opening ceremonies and the costume parade were not full. Because if I remember when we went two years ago, the first year that the con was at the Hyatt, I could have swore that whole space was mostly, if not entirely full for both of those events. I would at least say that the costume parade part was at least packed to the gills a couple of years ago. But yeah, yeah. I was fairly surprised that yeah. uh, the area where ballroom A is because they removed the partition to do both the opening ceremony and uh, the costume parade that even was it, I think uh, close to Son of a bitch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> For those that, listening to the audio thing, a thumbs up graphic came up. <laughs> yeah, at uh, pretty much the very end side of ballroom A and then maybe uh, I would say a third of the other section of ballroom A wasn't uh, completely full. Yeah, it just surprised me because... But then you still had people along the, uh, uh, along the wall... Which, why'd you just sit down? <laughs> well, oh well. I mean, um, I mean, I get you want to be close up to the costumes and stuff, but what's the point? <laughs> yeah, like to, to some degree, I was. Uh, here's the thing. Look, um, you know, I've been to, again to enough G Fest that I kind of know what the opening ceremonies are about and what the costume parade is about. The costume parade uh, has more surprises every year than the opening ceremonies. The opening ceremonies have always been welcome to G Fest. Hope you had a great first day. Here are special guests and they usually will um, say something about themselves. And then over recent years, they've been given out some of the awards also during the opening ceremonies. Whereas some of our earlier G Fest we went to, they did those at like a dinner. Cause I remember you and I, we paid extra tickets or something like that to go to a dinner. I think it was yeah. like on Sunday. Yeah, and then they—that's when they ha handed out like the mango skyscraper and all that. Yeah, and then as far as uh, the second night, they did a lot of the auctioning and then uh, the drawings and everything too. They didn't but, do raffles though. Yeah, they. Well, they was sort about. of did raffles, but it was I would, I think they did it uh, over at the dealers' room because they always have that G Fest helping uh G fans helping G fans uh table there in the dealer's room. But, but they didn't announce it is the thing. Cause we didn't I've, go last year and you would think they would be like, look, we're gonna do the raffle the raffles, come back at such and such time and we'll announce the winning numbers. Well I think they that they that. Well, I think they did it over at their table once they closed up. Um as it would be nice time. to know that because you bought two raffles. Yeah. Um I think Fix they, that, I think they did, but I completely forgot <laughs> forgot about it. Uh, but yeah, they used to do all that stuff right before the costume parade. I would say just bring that stuff back again. Maybe at least uh, the first day. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> thumb. <laughs> again, uh, the thumbs up. Comment. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I would at least do it on. Uh, Either the first night, maybe like the auction stuff, maybe a couple couple of auctions there, and then uh, on the second night, also maybe do the other half of auctions, and then do the uh, raffle stuff. Kind of get everyone wild up before uh, the costume parade. Bring that stuff back. Yeah, because um, doing the raffles doesn't take that long. It yeah. doesn't. It takes no more than a few extra minutes. I, mm -hmm. I I don't understand it because it's not slowing down the costume parade by that much by doing the raffles. All you're doing is saying a couple sets of numbers and then you're moving on. But one of the things I thought was weird too, unless, again, since COVID, things have just been a blur for me. Maybe it's long COVID I got. Um, one of the things that I thought was interesting. There was no in memoriam this year because usually there's an in memoriam. And I know there was one individual that had passed 
And I really thought that maybe that person was going to be honored during the in memoriam. But then again, I don't think that family showed up this year. And as a result, they didn't. But uh, was there really no one? Especially with uh, Satsuma, that's that's the apparent. Um, He did die in this last year. I would. I let me let me double check. I I swear that he did pass away because uh, two years ago. Let me check. They did an in memoriam then, and I was certain once again because they had done it even back at the Crown all those years that we had gone, and I was, I was astounded that this year they didn't do it. Uh, from from our post, our Facebook posts, it was December six, so well after right last G Fest. So you would think that they would have done something, but. I know that they've done a panel uh, tribute right. to Satsuma, but yeah, they. Sh- I know every G Fest, and I think the one two years ago, they've always have done two years ago. They did one. a memoriam uh, section because I know- Takarada died like that March, and yeah. I remember specific because, like, you could hear sniffles in the audience during that. I remember that one clearly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and. And I know on the the schedule sheet where I think it was that they did the op- opening ceremonies uh, slot for a couple hours or something of the sort. And then the costume parade was a three or so hours that led up to 10 o'clock. And both of them were really short, especially the first night opening ceremonies, which only lasted 30 minutes. <laughs> So yeah, I use, I use up utilize that time seriously. Well, I, I mean, look, I understand that, that they had Pickwick movies. I think still right, um, but at least try to utilize some of that time. Well, no, I I don't have a problem with that, but it's just the fact that because again, we didn't go last year, so unless there were major changes, but we had gone every year from 2012. Through 2019, then there were two that didn't happen. Then we went the first G Fest coming out of COVID. Like, it, to me, it just was weird. It just was really weird that there was no in memoriam and stuff like that. And I'm not saying, look, you ha- you need to schedule something for an hour or two. I'm not saying that. Um, I just thought communication was lacking in a couple areas. Like, I, like. I mean, did they tell you at the raffle table to come back at such and such a time? Well, like I said, they probably did, but I completely forgot about it. (laughs) Because I just want to say straight up, because you don't know, if they didn't, that needs to be communicated. And I think um, what they need to do, and I, I don't recall seeing it in the program, and I'm not saying that it isn't simply because I didn't see it, uh, for the whole raffle thing, what they need to do is have a like a paragraph or something in there explaining what the raffles are, and then as a result, say, "Come to this room at such and such a time, and we will announce the winning numbers." Um, it needs to be communicated because, like I said, for many years it was done before the costume parade, and it didn't take that much longer to do. And I think on some level too, it could help bring more butts into the seats Mm -hmm. because again, like you and I said, we were just kind of shocked that the opening ceremonies and especially the costume parade, like the costume parade filled maybe 75% of that space. Opening ceremonies was even smaller than that. Mm -hmm. Like opening ceremonies may have been 50% of that space, if not less. Yeah. And the the opening ceremonies, you had uh, the special guests, there you would think a lot of people would be part of that at least just kind of seeing those special guests in person and then hearing from them for a little bit because they did talk uh one by one there but yeah i was really surprised by how uh less people attended uh the opening ceremonies and as well as uh the second night for the costume parade were uh, a section and a half wasn't quite filled up. Yeah, I want to. I'm just kind of curious. Like, why did people not go? I would think a costume parade for sure would. 
I mean, you know, turn out a major, like a vast majority of. And I've TV. heard, and I've heard people leading up to the costume parade that they were talking about the costume parade being uh, kind of the main, uh, the main bread and butter of the convention. Yeah, yeah the main attraction. And I've heard heard that leading up to it, but <laughs> I'm not sure. What, I, and I would argue what the deal that, it was. Out of all the costume parades we've seen, I think the quality of the costumes this year, awesome. Especially I, uh, towards the end there. <laughs> Especially like, towards the end. I, I didn't think there was a bad costume in that whole set. Mm. And it just I just was surprised because I'm like, every year these are getting better. And, and I like this year. Wow. Like you could throw some of these in movies. And, <laughs> and at least this year, uh, you didn't really see much of those inflatable uh, Godzilla 2014. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. Cause I think that they finally started to uh, uh, pull the plug on how it many took a decade. Were, yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. Cause I remember talking to you about that after the costume parade this year. One of the things that annoyed me the most uh, over since 2014 at these G Fest costume parades, and it happened with the kids' costumes, where, and I can understand it in 2014 and to some extent in 2015, those inflatable uh, Godzilla costumes. Fine. I mean, use it in 2014. The movie came out that year. I get it. 2015, I can understand that there is some you know, run off and, and, and all that stuff. Fine. But the fact that for years afterwards, we were still seeing a decent amount of those. I'm like, Oh my God. Like, can we stop with those? Like try, like if you want to completely alter one of those fine, but it was a lot of them came in just with the same inflatable. And I'm just like, Oh, for the love of God, just not, not only, not only the inflatable, ones but the the godzilla 64 rubber uh mask you know, like those were around quite a bit too on display in the uh the costume parade and i think yeah they i would say definitely have uh uh put uh put their foot down on those i don't think they put their foot down i just think th certain things ran their course look uh, like again I think if you're a really young kid, it's one thing. But if you're someone like maybe my son's age and older, if you want to use one of those like inflatable Godzilla suits, try to like really change something about it, whether it's the head, the dorsal fins, whatever. Like retool the darn thing. Because there were so many G Fest costume parades there for a number of years where all it was was just those inflatable costumes. And I know some people one after the other, <laughs> I'm sure it's, it, I'm sure it's funny because some people watching or listening to this are like, Oh my gosh, the, you know, the, it took up space in these guys' heads for so much to where they didn't sleep. It's like, no, but I, I just, I got so sick of it. Like, I mean, it's reasonable. <laughs> it's reasonable to argue about it is like after a while, just seeing them one yeah. after the other, it just gets tiring. But then also, it just makes people less creative in a way where as it is yes. this year, this year. And then two years ago, you start to see more of the creative stuff. Yeah. I, again, like I said, if you have a child that's like six or seven or younger, fine. I don't have a problem with the inflatable, but beyond that, get more creative, yeah. <laughs> do something different. I mean, if you're getting it's, used to it. it's reasonable to see people just walk around the halls of the convention, you know, just yeah. kind of displaying their fan, uh, their pride and stuff in the Godzilla or MonsterVerse, wearing the either the inflatable Godzilla or the inflatable con suit <laughs> uh, or costume there. But then otherwise, just don't sign up for the costume parade yeah <laughs> just wearing that is just there were a couple that were key locks and i thought for sure we were going to see in the costume parade but they weren't i'm like oh because they their costumes were really good and i was expecting Spe to see especially them, seeing the guy up. especially seeing the guy 
<laughs> in the costume parade dressed up as uh, the key lock. That yeah, but there were just... <laughs> like four or five other gals that um, had key lock costumes. Mm-hmm. And I thought I, I, I had seen them earlier and I'm like, oh, we'll probably seen them in the costume parade. Nope, they, they weren't in it. Yeah. Like, Which I thought was strange because I'm like, oh, those are good costumes. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised what some some of them you'll see around, but then they don't end up in the custom parade. But oh well. Yeah, um, I guess we can talk about some of the panels that we went to, <laughs> which is uh, far in between. <laughs> no, <laughs> be no, honest, not really. Not really. Uh, we'll do dealer's room as like the last thing, um, as far as like what we got and stuff. I guess I can go first. Like I went to, uh, it was one of the first panels on Friday, the first day. I went to the return of Godzilla 40th anniversary. Both of us did. Uh, panel. Uh, I thought by and large that was pretty good. It was pretty informative and, and pretty, pretty fun. That would good turnout. Um, I, I think some of the stuff that they brought up as far as its pre production. And what have you, I had learned from uh, other materials that I had read over the years. But I think I I walked away with, um, uh, you know, some new knowledge mm-hmm. on that film as well. But then we kind of had sort of kind of in our inner circle, sort of a controversy with within that panel, uh, self dealing with uh, one of the panelists there when he talked about uh, Satsuma there, where he did. Uh, a a pair of fake cry, uh, yeah, for him, and then just sort of got out of it in the blink of an eye. Which, in that regard, that's sort of a disrespect. That that moment where he mentioned Satsuma's name did a cry, and I thought it was legitimate because you know to me it sounded like an actual cry, which was fine. But then he hopped out of it and said something like "moving on" yeah. or or, or and, whatever. And I um, and I sort of noticed that r- right away, and then maybe a, a few or so seconds later, you you came over to my ear and asked me, "Is like, did he just fake cry in that part?" Well, yeah. And then I said, and then I said, just, uh, yeah, just the way it looked like, <laughs> he just got out of it within a few seconds, or like I didn't see second. him do it, but I heard him obviously. Uh, but yeah, like here's the thing, like. The, the individual um, was decently autistic. And, you know, I, in my experience, uh, being around uh, those individuals, they sometimes, I, I, I think, don't understand that some of what they say and do can come off wrong. I don't think he meant any harm by it, but yeah, it was disrespectful. And I know it bothered Lincoln because Lincoln kept talking about it. And I said, no, we we're not going to say anything because this isn't someone that I, I think really knew better. And I don't feel like because I'm not that individual's parent, I'm not related to them or anything like that in any way, shape or form. I was like, I don't think it's my place for me to really say something um, about it. But it, to me, it was deeply unfortunate that that particular moment happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that, so that's kind of our inner circle sort of controversy i'm not sure if anyone outside of us sort of thought about the same i'm sure someone did because i thought i heard like some whispers and maybe some people looking at each other uh but you know i can't attest to that any any further but but anywho (laughs) let's sort of get out of that topic and just kind of go back to what uh we were talking about here and so uh my next panel i was gonna go to was 60th anniversary of Ghidorah and the Three-Headed Monster, but I couldn't go to it because the damn thing was not just standing room only, it was hallway standing room only. <laughs> and just, um, that disappointed me. Um, mm-hmm. 
because these anyone who has listened to this podcast over the years knows I love the anniversary panels. Like those are my favorite types of panels at G Fest. Those are my favorite types of things to do at G Fest is go to those anniversary panels because I love learning about the history behind some of the movies, you know, pre-production and then actual production and then release and the reception and all that stuff. I have yet to go to Kaiju United yet to see the recordings of those panels. Thank God somebody like Kaiju United um, came along this year and decided to record the panels because um, otherwise I, I would not get a chance to watch it. In fact, I kind of forgot Kaiju United this week yeah. uh, recorded those because that was one of the things I was planning on doing this week was to go back and watch those panels. I have yet to do that. Now that I remember, I need to make sure I do that. Um, but yeah, like I just, I was deeply disappointed. I couldn't go to that. And there mm-hmm. will be a couple others that will come up in conversation here that I couldn't get a chance to go to because damn it, too many of you <laughs> went stop it (laughs) but uh fortunately enough after that i did go see the 60 year of dagora i was there with you yep yeah we missed a little bit of the beginning of that though because i think we went to the dealer's room for a short bit i think we missed the first i don't know i think i think i did go to the dealer's room first and you uh, and I, we can. you, and then I don't know if Lincoln was with you at the time. You, uh, you guys uh, stayed for a little bit while I went, and then you guys came shortly after. Um, as far as what I did see out of that Degora panel, it was fine. Mm-hmm. Um, I like I said, I can't attest to what you know, our information was, was, uh, shared as far as like pre-production and all that stuff. It was interesting to see the different iterations of Degora from like video games, trading cards and TV shows and all that stuff. I would say that. Um, and then how, um, the materials were made for Degora there. And yeah, in some of, uh, uh, the behind the scene fit, uh, photos and then maybe a short video, uh, to their, but yeah, some of the iterations and uh, evolutions of Degora leading up to it, and uh, and I think uh, Degora was kind of on the top of their minds, dating all the way back. Uh, I think t- to the either the first or second Godzilla film. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I just wish I could have seen the beginning of it, um, but from my understanding, though. I don't think as much was shared on like kind of the whole development of the movie as I had hoped there would be. Maybe there just isn't enough material on it. If that's the case, then, you know, I'm not going to hold that against the panelists. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it was fine. You know, I, I mm-hmm. you know, it was fine. <laughs> it was fine. <laughs> I mean, it, was. Me, it was fine. <laughs> it, was, it was fine. Shut up. It was fine. <laughs> um, you know, I'm just poking fun with you here. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, it's fucking fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, uh, I know uh, pretty much the only one that I can see blurting out from my face here is the 50 <laughs> years of Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla. Again, another filled up room that both of us wanted to go see and then. I'm not sure what else we couldn't. did at um at that time. I I think I just sort well, you went you actually tried to go to that room, but then you texted me how that sucker was filled up uh to the brim as well. And I think I was at the the dealer's room at that time. Uh too. So that I was like, why even bother trying to go back? So I'll just sort of rummage around the dealer's room. Um at that uh, point too. But then I think uh, we did manage to go t- uh, to Godzilla minus one for a bit or maybe for the entire thing. I was there. I was there up until they started doing audience questions because for me personally, anyways, once you start getting to audience questions, there's not much you're going to learn <laughs> after yeah. that because 
I'm sorry. Some of the questions audience members ask in some of these uh, panels, and again, I've been doing enough of these that I kind of know what's coming. It's just like, oh, dear God, like, let's leave. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, some of the questions are not going to pertain to the subject at hand. Other questions are people who think they're funny but aren't, um, you know, whatever. But you want to know why we were able to go to Godzilla minus one in that panel? Now a whole lot of, uh, well, it was in ballroom BC at that time. That's it. <laughs> That's the reason. <laughs> That's the answer. It was in ballroom BC. That's why we were able to go. <laughs> well, I think that whole entire ballroom was packed. And I think that was uh, one of the panel rooms where I was just standing in one of the corners. Uh, I think we both too. were standing in the back with that one. I think, I think so. Yeah. And then, um, and then of course you get, uh, kind of their opinions and review and whatnot. Um, and then after that, I am in my, um, experience with day one. I don't think we haven't, didn't really go to much of, any we didn't other go to things. any other panels. Uh, I wish that's one. Uh, I wish now that I'm seeing it, I wish I would have gone to, to the space monster uh Wamagru uh Wamagrui uh a panel that they had there from four to five thirty. That one is, seems to be a little bit long uh there. But yeah, I think after that we just sort of went to the dealer's room for a bit and then just kind of went back upstairs or whatever we did uh until the opening ceremonies, which lasted for 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. So then we slept. At least you guys did. I didn't. I, that's That was another thing about this. <laughs> that sucked. Other than getting, uh, other than Lincoln and I getting a mild stomach bug, I slept like. Wasn't this, wasn't this shit. the, wasn't this the same night where um, fireworks were going on? I could have sworn. Cause it was either Friday or Saturday, but you know what? Fuck those guys. I shot <laughs> off fireworks. I had just lied down. I had put my head on the pillow. My finger was on the light switch to turn the, turn it off. And then boom, boom, what the hell? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it lasted for like 20. Yeah. That's the minutes. That's the, uh, the Rosemont entertainment district for you. Where they and I thought to myself, like, you know, when it was at the crown, yeah, we experienced that periodically, but I'm old now, people. Like, I try to go to bed at a more reasonable time. Be respectful of your elders. Damn you, clouds. <laughs> <laughs> Get off my lawn. <laughs> but, but part of it, though, too, was that by that point in the week, because you're talking like Friday night or Saturday night, I was beyond bushed. Because I had gotten there Monday, and just for whatever reason, other than Sunday night in which I actually kind of slept decently for that the first time that whole week, mm -hmm. like I remember waking up to you almost every day, like and basically telling you like one of the first things I said was like. I slept like garbage. Like <laughs> it was usually one of the first things I would say to you is I slept, slept like, like shit. I slept like <laughs> shit. Like, it just, I don't know what it was. Like, I don't know if it was just being in a different bed, but see, the thing was, was that in years past, yeah, maybe the first night or two, I had some difficulties, but then I usually got used to it and was fine this year. Like it was not to be in terms of like getting some decent rest that whole stay i just mm -hmm. i'm still no joke and trying to recover from that <laughs> i just I can't, yeah i fucking can't do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm i think recently i'm sort of been not having good enough sleep recently but i think since propping up my head a little bit when I sleep, I think it's gotten to be a bit better. But see, I've I, always I, slept I, I with swear. two pillows. That's well, the thing. I, I've always slept I, with two pillows. For me, I slept with uh, one pillow because 
my pillows are pretty thick and uh kind of have this uh i i forget uh sort of the things that they have with it but uh it just i managed to sleep with one pillow over the years but for some reason the last couple or so years um especially this year having a little bit difficulty sleeping but then i've got this little uh triangular uh type of thing um uh, uh upstairs uh in my bedroom where whenever i have difficulty sleeping i just put that underneath my pillow to kind of uh prop up my uh head a little bit and i just fall asleep pretty quickly so i just kind of uh made do with a couple pillows here and there to kind of prop up my head and zonked out <laughs> after yeah. a little bit by the way, one week. quick side note I want to talk about before we forget. It was a we went to Dave and Buster's like Thursday. They had the Godzilla virtual reality game. Yeah. Or that's the first time I've ever seen that and experienced it. Same here, yeah. Let me tell you something. Um if you have never played that, you need to yeah. find that machine somewhere. Dave and Buster's or where there's an arcade or whatever play that sucker that thing is the greatest vr experience i have ever had i know and it's just i was blown away like the the graphics remind me of like dean cube xbox one type of graphics like pretty good mm -hmm. but like the experience with like the, the wind blowing in your face and how it like made you think you were free falling for like half a second and boom boom like you're going oh my gosh it was amazing <laughs> well, I know the uh, the Dave and Buster's uh, down in Des Moines here. I think I might have told you that they either had uh, the Godzilla VR or the King Kong one, either one of those two, but never got to experience it. Then when I went to go see Minus One at the, the mall there where Dave and Buster's is located. But yeah, the, the VR that we... Uh, got to experience over there in Chicago. Yeah, it was really good. And he had at least one of the representatives, I think on the first day of G-Fest over there, handing out all the Dave and Buster uh, little cards with the QR code and everything where you can get a discount and has the, the Godzilla VR <laughs> experience logo on there, which was pretty sweet. Yeah. So nice little side note. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so day two. Um, so I went to the Godzilla versus Mothra, Mo Mothra versus Godzilla anniversary panel. Uh, another good one. I thought that one was pretty darn good, fun, informative, a nice way to celebrate, in my opinion, one of the uh, not just great Showa Godzilla films, but one of the better godzilla films yeah i think as well I, I i liked it i think i might have been there for a little bit you were there uh, for like a few minutes and left yeah for a little bit and i think i might have went over to the ultraman one uh for a little bit just to kind of see what they uh were talking about over there and i think there isn't really much <laughs> interesting uh over there but uh i think at that point i just went into the dealer's room kind of sort of the first thing there after I left. One of the pa panels I re I know I'm getting ahead of myself here by just a little bit. Uh, one of the things I regret not going to was the Jeffrey angles uh, interview. Cause I had looked at that name and I'm like, it looks familiar, but I didn't bother to look it up because <laughs> I was lazy. <laughs> And come to find out, like when we're at G Fest during the opening ceremonies, yeah, he was the guy who translated. He was the guy who translated and put together the novelizations of Godzilla and Godzilla Raids again. This came out early last year, I think, if I remember. Um, he's working currently. And I had remember reading about this before this G Fest that he's putting together the Mothra novelization. Uh, as we speak so that's something to look forward to and i remember telling you because i had when i got this book like a year and a half ago and i saw that he is a professor at western michigan which is like an 
hour, no more than an hour and a half away from where I am. I was like, got to get him as a guest on here <laughs> at some point. And they, uh, at the opening ceremonies, named a couple of the classes that he teaches over there. And I'm like, son of a bitch. I wish I had those when I was in college. Like yeah. I would have. <laughs> and I remember, I think, I don't remember if I ever said this on the podcast before, but I have daydreamed before as far as like, if I were a professor at a university and doing like a kaiju type of course or courses, what would I discuss? And um, yeah, I always have fun uh, with that. So that's one panel I wish I would have. But that's one thing I want us to work on uh, in the next year or two is to try to get him uh, to come on to the podcast here. <laughs> and then um, I think after that, I maybe went in a little bit for the uh, Space Godzilla behind the scenes uh, panel that they had uh, over there. But I think at that time it was around noon. So went there for a little bit and uh, just did uh, lunch for that. And then after that, um, I'm not really seeing a whole lot of the other panels that look familiar in my eyes. I will here. say um, I tried doing the Space Godzilla but again, it was not to be. Yeah. I wanted to also do um, Billy DeBose's Godzilla Battle Royale because I knew he was giving away, I think giving away or selling, um, some Blu-rays of his film. And I've always wanted one of those. And I didn't go to it. And I saw people in the hallways with him. And I'm like, God damn it, I missed it. <laughs> like, I just... <laughs> so one of these days, Billy, if you listen or follow this, I am going to hit you up uh, via messenger in Facebook and ask you about a copy of your film. The one thing that I do remember going to was the uh, Alan Henry uh, interview panel. I wish I would have gone to that too. I went in, into that one and I think I was in there for a good portion of it. Yeah. I think I was in there all the way up to when they were asking questions there and now it's kind of it for me but yeah it, uh a lot of interesting stories that he had and sort of behind the scenes and how they kind of put everything together especially uh the things leading up to uh the whole suko being used as the weapon there and they did at least a couple takes uh and showed him to wingars like uh why not uh it's like, uh, what's wrong with the first one? <laughs> and the first one was the Suko as the weapon one. <laughs> I I didn't get a chance um, because I haven't done autographs in a while at these GFS. Alan Henry, in my observations of him at this year's GFS, looked like he was one cool dude. Like, really yeah. nice and just really cool. And yeah. I... I regret not going to that panel and, and not taking an opportunity to at and, least try to talk to him at some point. And for those of you that don't know who Alan Henry is, he's the one that uh, portrays Khan in both uh, GVK and GXK. You do. Yeah. And let's see here. I don't know. I didn't do drawing monsters with Matt and Hiroshi this year because when I went two years ago, the darn thing was so packed. I was claustrophobic. Yeah. <laughs> um, I kind of wanted to do the Kaiju Kingdom podcast where they were talking about Godzilla and Kong creators, but then there were, I just, I don't know. I didn't think it was going to be exactly what I thought it was going to be. So I didn't bother. Yeah, I think that one was, they were talking about the, uh, what the guys who were doing the, the DC comics, but uh, okay. Godzilla and Kong. Okay. Okay. But then, yeah, other, other than that, after the Alan Henry one for me, I just kind of rummaged around randomly <laughs> around the, the convention, going to dealer's room. Jay, the Jason, was, room. Jason was like one of those uh, people you see in a hospital with a gown and just wandering. Uh, <laughs> I, I maybe went to a dealer's room for a bit down the film room and then the, the game uh, room just to kind of look at what's going on over there. But yeah, that was kind of it for me. Leading up to the costume parade. Mm -hmm. 
All right. So do we want to do the third and final day? Yeah, I think with this one is just mainly going to the dealer's room for the last final time. But then I do remember um, one of the very first ones here uh, cropping up. Well, I did go. The very first one was go to the 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 bottle display room uh, there before everyone grabbed and left. Uh, and then went into the art display room, just kind of look at some of that stuff for a bit until the, the soft final toys or sofa B one Oh one panel, which I stayed for, uh, quite a bit. Uh, I don't think I, I, I left maybe at a, uh, decent time when they were still in the middle of it, but they were kind of going through, uh, the history of sulfa B and how it came to be and all that stuff. So it was pretty informative uh, there and just kind of showing the uh, the process on how to how they were making sulfa B. Uh, the guy that was doing the panel um, was I think he, uh, he co-founded the the seismic toys uh, uh, company there that also makes sulfa B and they've got their own little vendor uh, spot in the dealer's room there. But uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty informative. Yeah. Sunday. I mean, not only were there just not a whole lot of panels that interested me, I ended up not going to quite a few panels that I did want to go to just because like Saturday and Sunday was kind of when my stomach bug was hitting me the worst. But I spent a large chunk of that day just up in the room uh, cause I, one of the panels I wanted to go to was, uh, when dinosaur comics ruled the earth, couldn't go to it. Uh, I was decent enough to go <laughs> to the monster verse 10 years later panel or mm -hmm. probably should have been more appropriately titled something to the effect of like why we hate the monster verse 10 years later still um oh dear god like um this was the panel i have least liked the most since 2018's pacific rim uprising panel um dear god like um you know, Ramon Flores was really kind of the only one that was kind of cheerleading the thing. And I'm not saying you have to cheerlead, uh, you know, all these panels. Like, you don't always need to be someone that is like, rah, 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 Mothra versus Godzilla. Rah, 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 Godzilla versus... You know, I'm not or, saying that. You know, at least try to be, like, talk about the good and the bad. But there have been some of these panels over the years. Granted, thankfully, they've been few and far between where... Some of them are just shitting all over whatever the topic is. This was kind of one of those. And I'm all fine with that, but there just weren't enough um, voices. There were four people on the panel. One was a fan. Two of them deeply disliked, if not hated, the MonsterVerse. Another one I would argue was probably more in the camp of being a bit more negative about it, but not as much as the other two. And again, I think, look, um, like I talked about in my little segment here that we recorded before doing this G Fest episode, I have seen a lot of fans and more specifically older fans um attacking and claiming anyways that there are these younger fans out there saying the monster versus the greatest godzilla series ever or something to that effect in my experience those people barely are around like i i don't i've only seen i think two of them ever and a lot of them tend to trend pretty young and so it like okay you have to understand that these kids these younger fans like you probably growing up when the show era movies were going on are going to gravitate towards these films because these are the movies that are coming out when they're growing up 
these are the movies that they have easy access to. So, yeah, they probably will think that. Instead, these older fans tend to shit on these younger fans that are claiming that the MonsterVerse is one of the greatest things ever. And it's like, you do realize that some of you that are bitching and moaning about the MonsterVerse are huge fans of the Showa films, and that much of the MonsterVerse films over the last three out of the five films have become very Showa era like, right? Because you do realize that the first, if you were to compare these five MonsterVerse films to the first five Showa era films, the trajectory in tone that the MonsterVerse films have taken is exactly the same as the trajectory of tone that the Showa era films took, right? Like they went from being pretty serious you know, and having something to say to being absurd entertainment, which is fine. I Like I said, when we covered New Empire two, three months ago, I said I came to peace several years ago that that's where the MonsterVerse was going. And one of the reasons why I love New Empire is that it is nothing but good fun. And these older fans are shitting on these younger fans. It's like, look, you people are supposed to be okay with it. I'm not saying you have to like the films. That's not what I'm saying. But I would think you at least would appreciate the films for creating new Godzilla fans and that you would be mature enough and not dicks to these younger fans and be like, look, hey, look, there are some of these older films out there. This is where you can find them. And this is what some of the films are about. And instead, most of these older fans are doing nothing but making fun, cracking jokes at these younger kids and at these movies. Um, they're being assholes and they're not helping the situation and i just have to say fuck you to those people that are doing that because what you're doing is you're harming these younger fans and it's part of the reason why i just ultimately said i am done with this fandom because i'm tired of people being dicks for really petty stupid reasons and i have seen some of these younger fans give up and I got a son who's nine and is a huge fan. I worry about what his experience is going to be once we allow him to start using the internet more and doing all that. Um, and this panel on some level was indicative of that. It wasn't as harsh as some of the examples I gave, but it was enough to where I realized the MonsterVerse needs to have appreciation, even if you don't care for the films, because they are creating new fans. Toho doesn't seem to have a problem with it, because you know what? If they did, they would have said, you know what, we're going to take that Godzilla license back. Yeah, it's money. But you know what? The 98 film made a lot of money, and you know what Toho did? They're like, yeah, we would prefer you not do it. And I think, though, they didn't pull the license on that because they had a contract, but they just decided we would prefer you didn't. And so, uh, but Toho has had no issues with the monsters, mm -hmm. you know, they're even selling licenses to Mothra again for the new empire because they tried some different Kaiju and it didn't work. And so legendary, Hey, can we use the Mothra license? Again? Yeah, sure. Yeah. They mm -hmm. paid, money, but still it's, you know how protective Toho is of this property. Mm -hmm. And, this and I panel think, and I think was, a lot of people just don't quite understand that. Right. Well, again, it goes to that whole hypocrisy thing I have about this fandom at large is that th th there are a lot of people who are just not self-aware. They just aren't. And they don't understand how harmful their words and actions are, not just to these younger fans that we need to have, but to the fandom itself at large and this panel i'm not saying you had to love it and cheerlead and all that but you need to at least appreciate what they were doing and that was trying to not only do something a little bit different but bringing in some new kaiju and creating i think more importantly new godzilla fans mm -hmm. and scrooge jones had a moment where he uh, defended the 98 film, which I applauded. Um, but otherwise, most of this panel 
was just about shitting over the monsters. And look, I'm going to say this, and I don't care if anyone disagrees with it or not. I think the MonsterVerse films are just as good, if not better, than a lot of what Toho has produced. So, deal with it. Yeah, yeah and I think that's the, the one thing when it comes to these panels is that I think, I know it's probably not going to happen or, or anything, but I think just try to be more or less trying to make sure it's a bit more neutral and try to get both both sides right to everything just kind maybe do a little bit of gatekeeping so to speak the one time where gatekeeping should be useful well, try, try not to <laughs> let both like overall good or overall bad uh atmosphere or anything just maybe try to have things a bit more neutral um in that regard and say yeah you know, I know everyone's got their opinions and all that stuff, but, you know, here's mine. But, I mean, here's good things why I like about it. Here's some bad things why I don't like about it. But then just try to be more or less uh, neutral on, on these panels instead of just shedding on things. Because then you're going to have, I mean, there is a lot of first timers at this year's G Fest. I mean, you're going to have a lot of first timers. Uh, recently due to the MonsterVerse, and then here they are coming to their very first G-Fest, and then all they hear is um, a lot of shitting on the MonsterVerse and, and everything. It's not going to... It's making them... Uh, kind of giving them that expression is that um, maybe not return next year or in the future and all that. Yeah, I mean, one of the very few times I have been proud of this fandom happened during this panel in which a majority of the crowd at on a couple of occasions got vocal against those that really started taking the negativity too far. And, you know, basically we're like, no, like this franchise, the Masterverse, is nowhere near as bad as what you're claiming. It is. Is it perfect? No, but it's not as awful as you're claiming it is. And yeah, I mean, in 2014, because I remember you and I were saying that was the worst G-Fest experience we ever had because um, all of the 2014 panels involving Godzilla 2014 uh, were by and large negative. And Bob Eggleton, I think out of the three of them that happened that year, Bob Eggleton was on two out of three of them. And he, on the two panels he was on, was the only voice that defended the film. All the other voices on those two panels, and then even on that third one, the one in which he wasn't on, just shat on the film. And and then, of course, it happened again with Pacific Rim Uprising in 2018 on that panel. And yeah, I, I mean, I've been saying for years since the 2014 G Fest, like, yeah, I here's the thing: we go to these conventions because we love the the, the subject or subjects that are being headlined. You go to Comic Con because of Marvel, DC. Now it's turned into other things for like movies and and some other products. When you have panels. I don't think a panel, sh like you said, should be all one or the other. But if it's going to be one thing, yeah, I would rather have it be more positive than negative. I don't think any panel should be totally negative or even a majority negative. I don't. Because what's the point then of the convention itself? I think it totally undermines what the convention is about when you claim that it's about like G-Fest, celebrating Godzilla and the kaiju films that this convention claims it celebrates. And I'm not saying everyone has to like this stuff. I'm not saying that. But when you put a panel together, at the absolute bare minimum, you need to have one person that likes it and another person that doesn't. 
and then maybe and then one that have an enlightened discussion, and maybe another one that's sort of in the middle. Maybe, yeah, or, or like that, you know. But like the rah 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 panels don't wear me out because it's like, yeah, we come here because we love this stuff, you know. Like if I didn't, if I was middle of the road about it, why would I go to begin with? But it's the panels that just crap all over. It's just like, why? Like, it, it's one thing if you were a part, if you were one voice that was like, okay, I don't care for it, and this is why. But then where's the equal voice or equal number of voices that yeah. tried to defend it? Yeah. And That's, I know it hasn't happened. And I know we're going a little bit long on this uh, part because I think we need to kind of get elsewhere right i'm gonna finish up my piece on it uh to kind of round things out is that whoever at least sort of comes up with some of these panels um if if it's someone that overall does it you know is just gonna shit on that particular thing to me i'm just gonna ask that particular person what's even the point of doing the panel and just literally shitting on it when you can just say absolutely nothing about it, not having to deal with it. All it, all you're doing is just bringing up all the uh, crap that you don't really want to do to begin with in that regard. Just completely ignore it. Let someone else do it. Yeah, and I know, and I'm kind of in agreement with you, I, but I understand that like, a lot of people would hate that because they're like, oh, it's a litmus test and I want to be a part of the panel. But yeah, I, I do think um, the individual in charge of, of putting all that together probably does need to ask the question of like, OK, you're doing something like this, which is going to be very, very opinionated, um, you know, and not so much educational, so to speak. What's your format like at like? we can't have you be totally negative on it. And if you are, then you either need to not do it at all, the panel, or you need to try to find, have someone leave or some individuals leave to try to even out the, um, the responses, or you need to add enough people to try to even it out. Um, because we're here to celebrate and it's fine if you don't like it, but we need to at least try to, have equal voicing because I think the responsibility to, to the individual in charge of this needs to be the fandom at large, the attendees and not really to the individuals that are requesting to do the panel. Um, I understand it may be tedious and I can understand definitely some issues uh, it might pose because, you know, some, well, it's not fair. You know why I guarantee you there are a bunch of people out there that want to do panels and are probably being turned away because they probably were too late in submitting their requests probably mm -hmm. or what have you like, right. Like it's the negative panels, the majority negative panels that have always gotten me at this convention because it's just like, why bother? You know, and like you and I, like, I remember we just, we just kind of walked out, but moving mm -hmm. on, uh, we went to the final wars panel. You really didn't stay. Um, I was there, I was there maybe for 10 minutes at max. Yeah, and I stayed for roughly 20 to 30 minutes, may, anywhere from like 40 to 50% of the length of the panel. And um, I walked out uh, once the whole thing came up about a voice recording someone has kept all these years in an interview with Ryuhei Kitamira, the director of the film, where he was like... I. It wasn't mandated by Toho, but I wanted our Godzilla, the Japanese Godzilla, to kick the shit out of the American Godzilla. And because of all the awful experiences I had had about overhearing people and seeing posts and all that stuff, 
about the American Godzilla film, which is 26 damn years old at this point. Um, just people being petty, not getting over it, uh, being man babies about it. I, at that point, I stood up and I walked out. I, you know, it, it, like, and Billy DeBose was on that panel. Billy was not responsible for this. Um, you know, I hated walking out on him because I like Billy. Uh, but I just, I had enough. I had more than enough at that point. I'm like, you, you people that are still on this high, a little more than two and a half decades later, get over it, you stupid, stupid, pathetic fucks. Like, it's a damn movie. Just get over it. It's a damn movie. It's just a movie, and so many of you are losing sleep over it. Just get over it. But, uh, yeah, other other than that, I think that was essentially the last panel that I went to, and then after that, just kind of went to the dealer's room for one last time, and then uh, the game room, and then I think I just caught up with you guys uh, to the final film in the film room to kind of pretty much closed things out at five o'clock, which the final showing was Gamma versus Gauss. Yep. There. Yep. So that's like Lincoln's favorite space. Yeah. <laughs> and I can tell, but uh, yeah, other, other than that, uh, just kind of want to uh, dive into maybe a little things of what, what we acquired in the dealer's room. <laughs> Uh, well, I got a shirt and Lincoln, a shirt similar to what Jason's wearing there. Um, I got a couple other shirts, um, common writer, John, uh, Bilotti's Ultraman, um, shirt. And then I ended up getting the remaining gamma rebirth, um, roster of monsters. I got a Gorgo legacy figure set from Titanic creations. And then, oh, I got a Common Rider figure and then an Ultraman anime figure. Lincoln walked out with a bunch of Gamma Rebirth toys, some Godzilla stuff, um, a couple of T-shirts from Aardvark Tees as well. I had to buy a Godzilla sweatshirt because ballrooms A, B, and C are incredibly chilly. Well, it's not, <laughs> not just that, but the hallway was friggin cold yeah so i i had to buy a sweatshirt out of necessity so um that's more or less was kind of my haul for the year but i know you picked up at least a couple of shirts over at uh, hot topic unrelated to the whole community. well yeah i mean but they yeah, had a section I mean, this was one of them but they had a section of godzilla t-shirts there and i'll kind of show one of them uh that's over here but uh you're you're uh pretty much uh caught up with all the stuff that you got yeah it is but uh yeah i've got i got most of my things right here just to kind of show you here but uh i just kind of want to start out with at least a couple of the movies i have uh acquired uh one is the gamma Re rebirth and then the space monster juan mcgui there fortunately they didn't uh uh a vendor over there, DVD World, they didn't uh, have the Blu-ray version of the Wamagri one, but uh, decided to pick that up because I know uh, we've talked about at least trying to do that uh, movie here down the road. We should try uh, to do that before the end of the year, maybe, even if we don't get Common Rider done. Like, have it as, like, a year-end, like, fun thing. Yeah, and I know, but uh, I didn't acquire this one uh, from the the dealer's room, but uh, this is the one that Kent gave me. Uh, he, You had uh, the extra copy, so he just... I had an extra <laughs> copy, yeah. So he just gave that to me. And then, uh, besides getting the uh, the, the Jeep a shirt here, I've got the uh, the shot glass too, because uh, whenever I go on to trips, I always like to try to get a shot glass as a little memento. So um, af after tell them the truth, you are a heavy drinker. <laughs> <laughs> Not really anymore. Uh, although I did have a little bit of drinks here, uh, kind of ruining my whole uh, streak. 
although that, that kind of got ruined a month beforehand. <laughs> but uh, uh, otherwise, tomorrow's a new day. <laughs> um, with it being our 10th G Fest, I thought it would be kind of a nice way to kind of uh, get a little memento on that part. And then here's some of the shirts. Let me uh, grab them here. Uh, the first one is unrelated to uh, grabbing at the event, but this is another one that I grabbed. Yeah, yeah one of them from uh, Hot Topic is the, the Kaiser Ghidorah, and it has kind of a little comic strip. Uh, they all the do. There. See? Yeah. <laughs> they, they even had a Godzilla and Kiyu ones that had comic strips on the back, too. Yeah, I think... I think a majority of these shirts, uh, well, actually, uh, about half of them were non G Fest purchases. Like this one here is from Kaiju Number no. Eight, which is based on a uh, a manga and anime uh, type of thing. So that was kind of pretty cool to see some of that stuff there. My Hot Topic, by the way, we were there the other day, the kids and I were. My Hot Topic has a couple different kaiju, or should I say Godzilla shirt designs that the Hot Topic there that we went to didn't have. Yeah. And then here's another kaiju number eight. Kind of has a little shine uh, effect to it there, which is kind of neat. There. And then the last shirt, I... Fairly surprised I'd never had it for many yeah, years. Yeah, I know. Jeez. But then, but then finally got it. It's the uh, the posterized shirt of Godzilla versus Space Godzilla. <laughs> welcome, <laughs> welcome to being a Godzilla fan, Jason. It took. You know. <laughs> well, I know I've got like the Godzilla versus King Ghidorah, the orange shirt, where you, you see me wear that from time to time during our recordings or live streams, and then the Godzilla. I don't know versus why Opera they. One. I've never won. I've always wondered, like, why orange? Why did they print that in yeah, black it was, on orange? I've never figured that out. Yeah, it was just pretty much a monochrome uh, version of the poster. Yeah, and I'm sort of weird. Yeah, that's that that's that seems to be the only one out of all the posterized shirts here. Even like the the original fifty four and and the uh, Godzilla raids again one, they were all full colored and everything. All. Pretty much a majority of these post rise shirts were full colored. Only the King Ghidorah 91 one is just monochrome black, just on an orange shirt. I'm and why orange? And I'm like, why not colored or something? I would like to know uh, the decision on just only that posterized shirt being yeah <laughs> that way as it is. It's just weird. I just always thought it was strange. Yeah. But uh, that's pretty much it of the, the shirt ones. Uh, let me grab uh, all the, uh, the figures. <laughs> it's stuff I got here. Uh, still got them in the bags. I haven't ate, uh, unwrapped most of these here uh, since wrapping them up. I think, what's this first one here? I think, okay, here we go. Is the the first one here is the uh, the anime uh, Gamera yeah, from Gamera Reaper <laughs> right there. Fantastic Gamera. Yeah, and then th I think this one is uh, one of the common writers. Jeez Louise! <laughs> oh, they gave me a free pen. Didn't didn't even realize that. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Okay, here we go. Uh, this one is the uh, the kaiju number eight uh, figurine. Oh, I did so, get a. I got one of those and also a Daimajin Bandai. Oh, good. good. I forgot about those. But uh, yeah, for for some reason, I got a free pen <laughs> from the yeah. vendor here. I didn't realize that. Uh, and I then, did too. <laughs> yeah, I think. Okay, here we go. So here's the Shin Kamen Rider. Uh, figure there. We still gotta watch that movie. Yeah, and then the uh, the anime Ultraman uh, figurine there. So that's pretty much it from uh, this whole bag. Try to get these all back 
in here as well as well, I probably shouldn't put the pin there. In there. Are you gonna show crazy. anything else? <laughs> oh yeah, I've got I've got plenty here. <laughs> don't you? Should you? you, don't you, should you uh, d- uh, you know? Should you uh, tell everyone how much you, money you took? <laughs> <laughs> I I took uh, fifteen hundred. Originally, it was going to be four thousand. Oh my God! That's <laughs> even. <laughs> oh dear God! I was going to take four thousand. But uh were you gonna buy the invention? <laughs> Maybe. Uh finally got uh the Godzilla minus one figure here. Kind of put it on the back display. Well, most of these are gonna be in the back display here. And then um uh, and then yeah, got, you should get the Godzilla the ride one. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Thought about it, but uh here's uh one of the uh sofa B. This one is a Baragon. One, I'm, Baragon. Let's see which one is this uh, Marusan uh, Baragon here. We got that one. And put these back. I have a Marusan G ninety eight. It's one of my prized possessions. Yeah, I, I still have I'm, Godzilla ninety eight. Deal with it. I I sort of regret not getting one of those two uh, last dinosaur T Rexes. Yep. I was. I wish I would have gotten those. I, re- I, I was trying to tell you. I'm like, dude. <laughs> the next time we go, which is in maybe two or three years uh, from now, I'm gonna need to write myself a note to. <laughs> the first, the very first thing I need to focus on is getting the uh, Sofa B Last Dinosaur T Rex. But uh, the next one here, I had to get it. Is the the Dimogen. <laughs> sofa B here. And this one is also a Marusan one here. Looks like a clown almost. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a little bit weird how the uh, the one arm there is kind of in a weird position over there. And then the other one is just kind of straight like that. And then the next one here is a, a Bullmark uh, Angurus. They're kind of a or- reddish orange gold looking one, which is uh, pretty cool in a way. So that's it for this bag. Uh, all the figurines. And then I've got one more bag, and I think that should be it of all <laughs> the haul that yeah. I got. Yeah. All right. Last final bag. Uh, first one up is a Bullmark Megalon. <laughs> Wake up, was... Megalon. <laughs> Pretty cool, and it's right. And then the next one here. Oh, this one. <laughs> I think out of all the per- out of all the halls I've showcased here. This one is probably the most expensive one. <laughs> the Hedora. This one is from the way it looks is a Marusan Hedora. Kind of this pinkish gold looking Hedora. Pretty sweet. <laughs> Very large too. <laughs> Let me put you back in there. And then I think, yeah, I think this is the very, no, I've got a couple actually. Uh, the next one here, this one was a pretty cool one. The Reptilagus Sulfur <laughs> Bee there. They they had a different, uh, they had a few different color, uh, variant colors of Reptilagus, but this one I think sort of fits the bill with that emerald green uh, painting to it. Kind of really matches uh, the look of Reptilicus. I like Reptilicus the monster, but the movie is mediocre. <laughs> yeah. And I'm trying to set him up right now, but he really kind of wants to tip over. <laughs> I'm going to have to do something about that. Uh, may have then, help part of it. Yeah. Okay. So, yep. This is the, uh, the final haul from the dealer's room. Is the... 
uh, Bullmark King Ghidorah. I think this it's is supposed to be uh, inspired by the original Rainbow League. That's so that's why I think it is because I think he was supposed to be mainly blue with kind of the gold and uh, red wings, for, uh, according to the uh, the original posters that they had of uh, King Ghidorah. That's why I think that's sort of their inspirations for it. But yeah, that's pretty much all my haul. There is kind of. Uh, a little bit of shirts, which I wasn't really expecting <laughs> to buy at all. Same with here, me, yeah. But uh, somehow managed or get pulled right into uh, getting a few more shirts. But the majority of it is uh, mainly focusing on the uh, the sofa bee, which I would say mission accomplished. <laughs> All right. Well, with all that, let's uh, just kind of give some final thoughts on this year's G Fest. Um, yeah, as far as far as uh, the fi- uh, the final overview of G Fest twenty nine, it was pretty crowded. In that regard, I was <laughs> one word to describe person. this year's G Fest: crowded. <laughs> That's pretty apt. I would. Uh, I think. It was sort of that way throughout the entire convention. It was pretty cr- uh, crowded, and even I even when we, you could tell, like it had dwindled quite a bit. Yeah, but it was still crowded nonetheless. Oh, yeah. But I would say maybe by noon, it started to uh, fade. But uh, when we went downstairs on Friday, the very first day of Do <laughs> Fest. We were having a breakfast over at Perks, kind of that a little convenience store in the hotel there. And I just, uh, and I said, you know what? I'm going to take a look at the line and see how that looks. And holy shit. <laughs> as soon as I walked around the corner there, there was already a line right up to that uh, corner. As soon as you walked to the main hallway leading into uh, the main panel, Dojo Studios, and uh, the dealer's room there. It was <laughs> ridiculous just seeing it. It's like even two years ago when I managed to get right up being near the front of the dealer's room line before it opened on the first day, I don't ever remember a time where it was that packed that line being backed up all the way during that time. But, uh, I would say besides all that, I would say this convention would be in the middle of the road, maybe sort of below average, um, in that regard, just with, and I know we talked about it, uh, here previously with some of the panels there and some of the little (laughs) inner circle controversies with certain panels here. Um, But there are some good things that came out of it with uh, the costume parade. We see a lot of really good costumes and thank God, no inflatable (laughs) Godzilla costumes from the 2014 movie. There were like one or two, but that was, yeah. Um, and then just having fun, you know, you know, seeing you there and as well as Lincoln there, just having fun, you know, outside of the convention for the entire week there, you know, going. <laughs> through, and and uh, a little maybe. inside joke that we developed like oh, God. several days before. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not going to share it now, but maybe we'll I would, see I would say out of I would say out of all the 10 G Fest. And I know we've talked about our certain little uh, themes during those uh, certain years and stuff. I would say this year's theme was probably top notch. <laughs> that was probably and it one was of, random. It just came, it just kind of showed up and probably just... <laughs> one of the best uh, random themes that we've come up with. <laughs> but uh, other than that, uh, it was. Uh, Went to Dave and Buster's, got the experience. Uh, finally, the Godzilla VR uh, video game over there, which was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, just 
at least having a good time outside of G-Fest there for a week. And then it was kind of an okay uh, G-Fest with certain things being like, uh, God, not this again. <laughs> but then also coming out with some of the good things uh, there. Um, if I would have to rank uh, 29 out of all the other 10 g Fests that we've gone to, I probably would say maybe place it in the 6th or 7th spot. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would have to take a little bit of time to go down the memory hole, look at photos and videos of previous G-Fest to really get a better idea here, yeah. as far as what my experiences were with the previous nine and then kind of reorder them appropriately. But I think, I feel relatively confident enough to say that if I were to do that, and this is unofficial for me, that if I were to rank this one amongst the previous nine, I probably would put it right around where you put it. Um, I'm not going to hold against it the fact that I got a stomach bug, like right as the convention started. But it did damper some of the fun a little bit because when you're sick, you know. But again, I'm not going to hold that against the convention, but it did force me to miss a little bit more of it than I was anticipating. Um. The huge crowds, um, damn, I mean, on the one hand, it was nice to see that Godzilla is resonating more and more with people, and you have the Monsterverse haters to thank for that. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, I understand Minus One was part of it, but Monsterverse is more prevalent right now. Um, like, it was fine. I was deeply disappointed to not get into those three panels that we had discussed earlier, the Space Godzilla, Ghidorah, and Mechagodzilla anniversary ones. Um, I still think some of the issues with those could have been prevented had um, those been moved to Ballroom BC. I think if those had been moved to Ballroom BC, yeah, there's still the chance. It could have been standing room only, but it would not be the problem that it was that ballroom a creates when it starts getting full. Um, so I'm hoping a lesson is learned from that. It's unfortunate that it had to be at one where 10 billion people decide to show up. Um, it was fine. Like it was a fine G fest. Um, but like I told Lincoln and I don't know if I even told you if you were around when I said it, but I'm kind of conned out. <clears throat> um, you know, I remember you and I, we were talking about, and I don't know if we had said it on the podcast at all, but you and I thought that one of the silver linings of not having G Fest in 2020 and 2021 was the fact that maybe it could hit the reset button for us. That because we had been talking about for a couple of years, even before COVID came along, about potentially skipping out on a G Fest or two for a while, because after about the third third or fourth well by the time we went to the fourth um which was like g fest 22 like we started having more fun again like for 22 and 23 we had an incredible amount of fun at those two and then things just kind of leveled off if not kind of went down a little bit again and i understand that a lot of cons that do this they kind of do a lot of them do more or less similar things. There's usually some sort of costume parade or contest. There's always a dealer's room. There's panels and stuff. Um, but I, I think I'm kind of, I'm kind of exhausted from all that. Um, I think the immense crowds, yeah, exhausted me. But I just, I don't know. Like I, I, I just, I went in excited and I walked out kind of meh. Yeah, and, and I know, and I know with the two year break when we went back two years ago, it was like, oh, oh, oh excited. But then towards the end, it was like, I kind of want to start heading back. It, it felt like, 
it was another consecutive year of, yeah, the same thing. And again, like, I don't know. I mean, I had written an open letter. I don't know how many years ago it was, you know, trying to change some things up. And I provided some ideas as far as how that could be changed up and even provided some individuals. The GFS committee could maybe ask to ask for ideas on changing it up. No one listens to me and that's the story of my life. But, um, you know, and like I said, because I, I've read more about cons and kind of what they provide. And it's like, it's not too different from what most other cons provide. And I think I'm just conned out. Mm -hmm. I think, again, like I said two years ago, if I didn't bring Lincoln, I don't know if I would have enjoyed it as much. Um, Lincoln, again, despite the fact that we were sick, I think just once again, seeing him experience certain things made it a little bit more fun for me than I would have had had he not been with us. Um, I just, I don't know. I'm kind of exhausted and tired of it um the fact too that the monsterverse panel was really not not good the fact that i couldn't get into three of the panels although hopefully i can catch up uh with them on kaiju united and the sporadic baby crying pettiness of people still just like losing sleep over a movie in Godzilla 98 that's 26 years old like that was bad for me too and um, I think if those hadn't happened yeah I, I probably would have had a little bit more fun time but then you know very early on from day one i kind of realized that this isn't helpful this isn't friendly to someone like me and um i just um it was fine uh we've been to better gfs um Hopefully, some of the spacing issues can be addressed uh, in the coming years. Yeah. Um, more importantly, though, I'm, I'm hoping two things change moving forward, though, outside the, the space issue. One thing I'm hoping is maybe there's something somehow they could do to just do something a little bit different at G-Fest. Uh, than what they typically do year after year. And I understand that some things become a tradition, and that's fine. Maybe bring back a few things, too. Bring back some things that maybe you did get rid of at one point for a while, or just try something totally different. Experiment. Mm -hmm. um, there's that. Another thing is, I just... They always claim about the Godzilla community being a family. I've never felt like I was a part of that family. And I know that there are some others that feel the same way. Um, <clears throat> I don't think simply saying, have a good time, be respectful and stuff, like just kind of throwing it out there helps because it's obviously not working. It would be great if there were panels, actual panels and discussions on just the community and how we need to do better. We need to stop harassment. We need to stop bullying. Mm -hmm. This particular convention is big enough and well-known enough that it would be the perfect place to have that discussion and to get people to do some introspection but to start bringing some more things to light in hopes that it can be better because it has to be better. It needs to be better. And I think every year that has gone by without an actual discussion and conversation is a deeply missed opportunity for this convention 
to actually, I think, make a, a, a serious mark to make the fandom better. And it's not just about coming together. It's about really reminding people that certain things are not tolerated. And that's what I have to say. So with that, <laughs> thank you so much for watching or listening. We'll be back August 24th discussing the Gamma Rebirth miniseries. And after that, more Netflix miniseries and films to come. Thank you so much for watching or listening. And we will be back in just a little over a month. All right. With that, we'll see you all next time. <laughs>